Good morning, everyone. It's Sarah, and it's time for Coffee and Crochet with Sarah. I've got my Tinkerbell cup today, and you can see it's a big cup because I need a big cup of coffee today. So, I hope that everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. And just in case you don't know, whoops, almost knocked something off my desk. This video is live streamed over to the Posh Pooch Designs Facebook page every Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. And I'm telling you this that way when I tweak it up and send it over to YouTube, you'll know it's not a live video. If you want to see the video live, you need to go to Posh Pooch Designs on Facebook at 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. And it's Mountain Time because I live south of Denver. And if you don't know how to figure out the uh, time in your area, just put up in Google what time is 9.30 Mountain Time in my time. Or you can even put your state or your area and it will tell you. Because remember, it's different times all over the world. <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. I see you all clinking in. Oh, we haven't clinked in yet, have we? All right, everybody. Grab your coffee or whatever you're drinking today and clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink. And yes, I've got my Tinkerbell cup because I need a big cup of coffee. But also, Tinkerbell has a little bit of an attitude. And I have a little bit of an attitude today. <laughs> Can you see my Rosie over there? Oh, she's over there. <laughs> she's over there. She keeps peeking in. <laughs> I've got my camera set up just a little bit different lately, and so you can see the pups over there in the corner on their poofs. Poofs. <laughs> well, before we get started, I wanted to answer a couple of questions that have really annoyed me. <laughs> First of all, I got a message or a comment that said that my giveaways suck. Okay, so <laughs> those of you that have received them probably don't feel that way. And so let me kind of explain to you, you know, what we're doing with our giveaways each month. And you are going to hear some whistling and some wind. We have crazy wind this morning. So if you hear the wind whistling or something, don't even worry about it. My uh, my yarn studio is on the top floor of our house. Our house is kind of built where we have a main floor. You know, a lot of houses in the Denver area are built this way, where you have a main floor, then you have your upstairs, and then you have a walkout basement. All right, at the bottom. And so my yarn studio is on the top floor in one of the big uh, one of the bedrooms. And so that's why you're going to hear a lot of wind because it is crazy windy. Okay. So, the way the giveaway works, and we've talked about this before, is the first Tuesday of each month, I will tell you what the giveaway is. And then you have two weeks to respond on that video. And then that third Tuesday of the month, I announce the winner's name. Our winner last week already received her gift. She got a hold of me that day. I got it out the next day. And I really love doing it that way. Okay, so the complaint was my giveaways are not big enough. And I know in January we had the big $50 uh, worth of yarn giveaway. So let me kind of explain to you what happens and where the items come from for the giveaways. I am planning on through the month or through the year of 2020 to do a monthly giveaway the same way we did last year each month. Okay. And so what I have done is I've contacted different craft stores, different other stores that sell crafts. I've also contacted different designers and different places that sell yarn and crochet and what I call yarny goodness items. And so as those items come in or I get something from a store or something, I try to come up with a neat way to give it away because I think it's a lot of fun. And it's also a lot of fun when you get a yarn you've never worked with and that way you've not spent extra money. But one thing you need to understand, okay, is I love this. And I am not going to stop giving away stuff. It is super fun. I love it when you get it. And I also, and, and the only thing I ask of you is that you just let me know you got it. You know? And so I do have some, 
you know, giveaways planned. Uh, the yarn that came in for March is here. It's right down there. It's 100% wool, and I'm really excited about it. And I'm going to tell you about that next Tuesday, the first Tuesday in March. All right. Now, I'm not going to be doing every month these great big boxes of $100 amounts of yarn. And the reason is, is that it's very expensive to ship. And I don't want you to have to pay any shipping to get yarn for free. I don't want that. That's why I like to do stuff that, you know, I'll do it occasionally. Like um, in January, we did the $50 yarn box. And I'll do that occasionally. But I just want you to know that I am not going to stop doing giveaways. I love giveaways. And if it's not something that you want, then you know, don't, don't participate sort of thing because lots of people, um, maybe it's not your cup of tea, the type of yarn we're giving away or whatever. And that's okay. Everybody has a right to their opinion and their thoughts about yarn. We all have ones that we prefer. And so that's why I've tried to contact some different places to try to get some different and new things, yarny things, and not always yarn, but yarny things, um, to give away. All right. So, to answer that question, I may not be giving away great big $100 boxes of yarn, but I'm still going to do a giveaway each month. All right. All right. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, I've gotten a lot of questions about where did Red Heart go? And um, one of them came up because of our yarn that I used this week was this swanky Red Heart boutique yarn. Okay. So what happened is Yarn Spirations bought red heart and they are in the process of combining everything okay so if you go to redheart.com you're not going to find uh, some of the links do um what do you call that you know they've got it linked so that if you go there it links over to your inspirations and things like that but something that i found out this morning when i was messing around trying to find yarnspirations.com is their site is also a little wonky right now Okay, so um, um, a lot of people have been trying to find this swanky yarn. It was sent to me from Red Heart, okay, but that was before Yarn Inspirations bought Red Heart. So if you're looking for a particular yarn, the way to find it, okay, you might, if you're, you can find Red Heart at, um, in, in different styles and different things, but not everything at Hobby Lobby. You can find it at Michael's and Joann's uh, carries the most amount of different varieties. Okay. So if you're looking for a particular yarn, say you're looking for this Red Heart Boutique Swanky, just go to Google search and put it in there. And uh, because you'll find a lot of these things on Amazon, you might find it on eBay. Unfortunately, you might spend a little more if you buy it off eBay, but if you're desperate to get it, you know, you need another skein of it or something. Um, but just put it in your search in engine and it's going to come up and then you can find where to get it. Um, if you go to redheart.com, you're just, it, you might get a redirect or it'll say a 404, um, error. And that just means it's not there anymore. And I know that they're still working on getting the Red Heart stuff and Yarn Inspiration stuff together and getting it all to work because, um, uh, it, it, it's, I, I don't know, I don't know enough about how that kind of thing works. I just know I can't find the yarns I'm looking for, <laughs> you know. And so I've learned Amazon is a great place to look if you're looking for a specific yarn, okay. And a lot of people have, have gotten frustrated because they're looking for, you know, just regular, ho, re, regular old Red Heart Super Saver in certain colors and they can't find it. And, uh, you know, Walmart carries a lot of Red Heart, but they carry really just the basics and a few extra things. And, you know, there's a ton of, of Red Heart yarn that is really hard to find because it's not out there everywhere like it used to be. Okay. And so, like I said, your best bet is, I mean, you can check Amazon, you can check eBay, yarnspirations.com because they did buy Red Heart, but I have found that the best way to find it is just to go to Google search and put in the name of the yarn. I mean, I put everything in there. This says Red Heart Boutique Swanky, and I'll even put sequin yarn because there is a lot of other kinds of sequin yarns. And we'll talk a little more about that when we talk about the uh, new pattern back there. 
All right, so I just wanted to, to clarify those two things because it is frustrating when you're trying to find a yarn and not be able to find it. All right, well, good morning to everybody. I see a bunch of you have clinked in. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a crochet along. Okay, and so I'm going to click over to my other camera and we're going to make this little clover or shamrock. It's a four leaf clover. And all you need to make one of these, let me move my coffee so I don't knock it over is you need an H hook, which is a 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle to weave in ends and your scissors, and then just a small amount of any kind of medium weight number four yarn. You can use wool, acrylic, alpaca, cotton, whatever you want to make this. Now, if you're not into St. Patrick's Day and you don't wanna make a clover, I'm gonna show you also how you can make this into a cute little flower. All right, so let's get on to this real quick. Let me look at my notes and make sure I give you the right information here. All right, now this measures about two inches also. It's not very big, so it makes a nice applique, but I'm actually gonna hook this onto um, a chain and I'm gonna wear it as a necklace on St. Patrick's Day. All right, so we're gonna take our yarn and we're gonna make a slip knot, and we're gonna chain five chains. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I just told you wrong. <laughs> That's for making the big one, and we're making the small one. <laughs> so we're going to chain three. <laughs> I have several uh, shamrock patterns on this piece of paper. All right, we're making the little two-inch one. <laughs> All right, so we're going to chain three. Disregard chain five and chain three. Okay, so now we're going to place five single crochets in the second chain from the hook. We never count the loop on our hook, so one, two, we'll go in, there we go, pull up a loop, yarn over, there's one, two, three, I'm gonna move those scissors, move the tail out of the way, there we go, <laughs> four and five. So we have five single crochets. We're going to join to our first single crochet with a slip stitch. All right. And now we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. All right. There's our chain six. We're gonna slip stitch into the next single crochet and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we'll go to the next single crochet and slip stitch. Get in there. <laughs> there we go. And chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have two loops. Now we've made a third loop. Slip stitch and chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we'll do that again. We'll slip stitch into the next stitch. Now, if you're going to make this into a flower, you would chain six and join, and then you would have five loops. But we're going to make a clover. And so we're going to just slip stitch in that next stitch. And now we're gonna go in these loops. And we're going to stitch six single crochets. So one, two, oops, <laughs> three, four, five, and six. Then we'll go to the next chain six loop and stitch six. One, boy, this is some slippy yarn I'm working here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we'll go to the next chain six loop. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we'll go to the last. Now, if you're making a flower and not a clover, you're gonna have five 
of the chain six loops, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if you're making this into a flower, like I said, you'll have five loops and you'll do six single crochets in each of the five loops and then you'll join and tie off and you'll have a cute little flower. But we're making this into a clover. So we're going to slip stitch in that slip stitch. We're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and just slip stitch back up. You'll have five slip stitches. There's three, four, there we go, and five. And then you'll just slip stitch right in that same slip stitch. All right, now we'll just cut off our yarn, tie off, and then you'll just weave this in. Now, what I like to do is sometimes when you start with this sort of beginning, you'll have a little hole. And if you prefer to do the uh, magic circle there, that's totally fine. Remember, I always say you do what works best for you. And if you're going to use this as an applique and sew it onto something, once that hole's closed, you can leave this string on here and use that to sew that onto whatever you're going to make. All right, let me go ahead and tie off the stem. I'm just going to weave that up in the back where it's not seen. Back and forth, going through stitches and fibers of the yarn. All right, so I'll go ahead and cut that one off. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this other one off because I'm not going to use that as an applique. <laughs> it's sticking to my scissors. All right. And so now I have two little clovers. And you'll notice this one looks a little smaller because the yarn I used, even though it is a medium four, is a little bit thinner than this one. Okay. This is Red Heart Super Saver. And I believe this is some leftover from a Karen cake. And so that's a fun little thing you can do. And like I said, if you want to make it into a flower, you'll just have that fifth loop and you'll do it exactly the same. And if you want a stem on your flower, you can always add one, but I don't when I make the flower. All righty. And that's our little crochet along today. And it's a fun little clover that you can make. If you're wanting to decorate, you can put that on anything, you know, a little bag, a little hat, a little headband, whatever. You, you can also just pin them on if you I hate pinching okay um, I know when I was growing up in elementary school you had to wear green or you were going to get pinched and one thing I do hate is pinch <laughs> I hate pinching <laughs> all righty well I noticed someone was talking about what I talked about at the beginning I want you to remember one thing even when someone is rude to you or unkind what I always say is kindness is always the answer I let them say their piece and then I try to be kind in return and sometimes the kindest thing I can do is say nothing <laughs> all right let's talk a little bit about what's new this week at posh pooch designs now the first thing i want to show you i'm going to go to my roaming camera here this is the one i just kind of roam around the room with this is our um sequin diva cowl and this is one we did this last week it is one of my favorites and the yarn that i originally used was called um, sequin diva and you can purchase that from hobby lobby they have it in lots of beautiful colors. They used to have solids and variegated, but I don't know if they still have the variegated because I haven't looked for it. Now, the yarn that, that I was talking about earlier that I made that out of was the sequins that is called Red Heart Bouquet Swanky. All right. 
and I forgot to tell you another place when you're looking for yarns that you can't find is on uh, Facebook. There's a there's a couple of Facebook groups where you can go in and, and say I can't remember what they're called. It might be yarn swap or something like that. I'm a part of the group and I have gone in there from time to time looking for yarns and you can put in there I'm looking for such and such yarn give the name give the style the color whatever and if people have it they'll say I've got it you know and sometimes they'll give it to you and send it to you sometimes you have to buy it you know but if you're desperate looking for a certain yarn that's another option okay another option I forgot about also is on Ravelry you can click on the yarns and a lot of people will load up their yarn stash and a lot of it is extra and if you see that somebody else has it then you can also contact them as well so there's lots of options and places that you can find yarns that you're looking for okay and like i said this whole thing with yarn inspirations and red heart has just really frustrated a lot of people we just have to be patient and give them time to get all the kinks worked out all right the other thing we did this week was these little washcloths and I love these and I always make them in a set of four and this yarn that I use is crafters secret for this color I think it's called pink alicious let me see yes crafters secret <laughs> upside down crafters secret pink alicious it's a hundred percent cotton and it's a really soft cotton for being a crafter cotton I guess you would say because I usually get the I love this cotton but I saw this and I thought it was really pretty and it make you can get four of these washcloths and sometimes I can get five you know the amount of yarn they put on a skein sometimes you get a whole lot more and then sometimes you get right at you know so you never know and so if you're going to make a set of four for somebody or for yourself make sure you can get one out of one of those skeins of yarn and this the ounces is I know that questions coming next this is two ounces okay and this one I made three out of and you can see there's still plenty there to make another one on it all right so that's our that's a pattern like um, you know the cow behind me um, I put the blog out there with the written pattern and it also has photographs I call that a photo tutorial and you can find that on my YouTube channel I wanted to show you something real quick let me go over to my computer here and click on here here's my youtube channel okay if um you go there at the top you'll see these things here home videos playlist if you click on that playlist it'll show all the different playlists that i have and you'll be able to find the different things you're looking for um like this one here is um a playlist of our washcloths of the month okay now a lot of people have trouble finding my YouTube my YouTube is just under Sarah Satch it's not I didn't put anything else fancy just Sarah Satch because I wanted it to be easier for you to find okay alrighty let's click back over to the front camera okay so um, all of my patterns you'll find them on my blog that's written out with photo tutorial and then you'll find the video tutorial over on youtube okay that one is th i love making these because you can you can wash your face with them take your makeup off toss them in with your bath towels they wash up wonderful because they're 100 percent cotton all right the other thing i wanted to show you is what we did yesterday and this is made with, you know, I didn't grab that skein of yarn. <laughs> it's made with the Red Heart Heat Wave. And I call this the snow, or the snow, the cold snap hat and cowl. And what you do is they're made exactly the same. This one's upside down. Let's turn it around. There we go. They're made exactly the same. The only difference is you gather up the hat and you can add a pom-pom if you want to. Of course, you don't have to. A lot of people aren't into pom-poms. It doesn't have to have it. Okay? And it's a really simple pattern. Um, it's just front post repeats that are offset. And it makes a really warm cowl and hat. These are um, 
all made with the Red Heart Heat Wave. And I love the names of the colors. Like this pink one's called Bikini. And I can't, I can't remember what the green one is called. But these are like Blue Sky and the, the off-white ones like Sandy Shores. So they're, you know, have really fun summery names. Even though it's, a, it's meant to keep you warm. And of course, this is a written pattern with pictures. As well as a video on my YouTube channel. All right, so those are the three new patterns that we did this week. You can also, um, if you if you ever have trouble finding um, where my patterns are located, you can always go to YouTube and find them there as well. And another thing is Google is always your friend. If there's a particular pattern that you're looking for, put it in. A lot of times if you just put in a description, it comes up with lots of things and you are able to find it. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is where do you post pictures? And I get this question probably five or six times a day. I, and I'm really serious. I'll get messages, I'll get emails, comments. Where can I post pictures? Okay, and so I'm going to bring you back over to my roaming camera. Let me see the computer camera. And I'm going to click over here. And on Facebook, this is the group. PPD Puppy Love Crochet, and this is a private group. Um, all you have to do to get into the group is just ask to, to be a part of the group, and then there's three questions. I think it's, do you love crochet, do you love yarn, and do you love dogs or pets or something like that? Okay, and we keep it closed because I've talked to you about this before. We've had some inappropriate um, comments and pictures posted without me knowing, and I really don't want any of that inappropriate stuff on there. And when I'm talking about inappropriate, I'm talking major inappropriate, not just something lightly inappropriate. <laughs> I don't know how to, how to tell you that without being yucky. But anyway, so we kept the group private. You can see up here where it says Puppy da, Puppy PPD Puppy Love Crochet Private Group. Okay? PPD Puppy Love Crochet Private Group. Okay, so... Um, but once you're in the group, you can post any pictures, and I really encourage you, when you post a picture, whether it's something you made from one of my patterns or from somebody else's, I really encourage you to go ahead and post a link, if you have it, from where you got the pattern from. Because if you post something that you made and people love it, which they usually do because there's a lot of wonderfully talented people in this group, um, people want that pattern. And so it's totally fine. Don't post the pattern or portion of the pattern. Um, just post the link, okay? And so, let me get you back over here. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> that's where you can post the link. I mean, uh, yes, <laughs> that's where you can post a picture and a link. And um, it's really easy to post a picture. Once, once you click on it, there's a little like camera and you just click on that camera and upload your picture okay because I really truly love seeing the things that you make from my patterns as well as other people's patterns because there are a lot of wonderful wonderful free patterns as well as paid patterns out there all right okay whoo that's a lot of stuff today wasn't it <laughs> well the last thing I want to tell you is how appreciative I am for all of you I say this often and I really truly mean it I can't do what I love without all of you. I love making videos. I love putting out free patterns for you. I love, love giving away gifts and free things. And so I just want to tell you all thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Because I love doing this. I love yarn. I love crochet. And I love everything that, all, all about it. And I love that you all love it as well. And I always want you all to feel that our, and I say our, YouTube channel, our crochet groups, ours, because we're a group, that it's a safe place for you and uh, to get away from the cares of the world, to get away, away from the cares of your work and family and things going on, and just spend 30 minutes just enjoying yourself and having a good time. And that's what this is all about. That's why I say the answer is always kindness.